So, I've talked about this before, you know, several times here on my channel, but it does bear repeating. You see, if there's one issue I've always had with a channel like Hallmark and some of its spinoff channels, is basically they showcase the same movie, you know, almost every time. And I'm not talking the exact same movie, no. I'm talking about the fact that it's under a different title, it's somewhat, if does basically have the same actors and actresses in it, the location might be different, and the synopsis might be tweaked a little bit to try to make it different, but in the end, it is just the same movie you just saw previously. And that's a problem, especially around this time of year. Now, I have given them credit that around Christmas, they do, you know, make an effort at least to try to switch things up. You know, in other words, make things a little bit more different because they know, hey, Families are going to be together for about most of the month, if not half of the month or whatever. We need to do something that's going to get everybody to watch and not just a Pacific audience. And so I'll give them credit that they try, you know, in the past, oh, they've tried in the past and currently do try uh, to switch things up. You know, I will give them that. But, but, you know, like I said, the, the one issue is basically, especially around this time of year, is you usually get the same movie back to back to back. Even if they promote it as something new, and you read the synopsis, you look at the, the little mini trailer they give it, you can pretty much tell just by the synopsis, even if it's tweaked, you know, by the mini trailer you're seeing, and even by those that are going to be starring in it, that, yeah, this is basically what you just saw, you know, just moments ago. You know, so why watch it again? Even if it's tweaked a little bit and all that, and the title's different. You know, why watch it again? Or maybe certain actors and actresses are in different roles that are opposite of what they played in the previous film. Like, why why watch it? It, You know, it doesn't make sense. But, you know, look, I understand that people do like this kind of stuff. I mean, I have friends from Oscarosa High, from my own class of 1998, that enjoy this stuff. And that's fine. And obviously, it's a popular enough genre for other, you know, companies, other cable companies and networks to kind of pattern themselves off of around this time of year. But I think if there's one thing we could give credit, maybe slightly, to some of those other cable companies and networks, is even though they seem to follow in the same path that Hallmark does by giving us basically the same movie time after time after time, even if they tweak it a little bit synopsis-wise, change the title, put in the same actors, but put them in different roles and stuff, you know, even though they might do that, you know, and basically give us the same movie, at least the one thing I can give them credit for is they're trying to differentiate themselves. They're trying to make things a little bit more different to where they know, hey, the, the whole family might enjoy this, so we got to put something in there it's going to get everybody to sit down and enjoy and not just, you know, make it the same movie. But, like I said, obviously it's popular enough as, you know, a seasonal genre, if you will, a seasonal event, that not only does Hallmark get its own float in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade based around it, but you have, like I said, you have networks, major broadcast networks like CBS and a few others, Fox, NBC, on occasions you know, kind of basically taking it upon themselves to showcase their own movies. You know, CBS just did one, what, a couple of nights ago? So, yeah, it's, you know, it's obviously, obviously very popular, but the one thing that I think is holding it back from potentially being even better is it's got to stop its repeating of the same story, even under a different title. Because, you know, you could preview it, you know, as something new with a mini trailer, like I said, I think I said that earlier, but like, you know, you could preview it, you know, with a mini trailer and all that, and they have a synopsis down there for people to look up on the TV, you know, and have that synopsis tweaked a little bit. But if they could already tell what the movie's going to be from start to finish from just the mini trailer and the tweaked up synopsis that you're giving them, then they probably won't bother watching it. I mean, they might give it a look at to see if maybe there are things that might be different. 
But that's about it. If it turns out to be the same story as before, they're going to tune it out. So, so what do you do to kind of fix that? Well, it's real simple. You don't repeat the same story. You don't do the same stuff over and over again. And I know people might accuse me of doing something like that by basically talking about the same subjects, you know, in different on-screen and audio videos and everything. And, you know, that's understandable. But sometimes people will do that, you know, to kind of update others on what's going on. But the difference with people like myself that do that is at least we're not saying the same things we did before. Well, we're trying not to anyway. We're basically trying to point out things that we've talked about before, but basically also add in things that we haven't talked about because uh, talked about before because they had occurred, you know, later on, and we didn't have a chance to add them. So we do our best to basically, well, switch it up, make things a little bit more different, more fresher, and that's what Hallmark needs to do, and other companies you know, cable companies and broadcast networks like Lifetime and Great American Family and even the big broadcast networks like CBS and ABC and NBC, this is what they need to do. They need to basically switch things up, you know, storyline-wise with these movies so they're not repeating the same thing over and over again. I mean, I don't know what the viewer ratings are for the Hallmark, you know, channel movies, you know, when it's not Christmas, I do understand and probably do believe that the ratings and viewership is high, you know, during Christmas because, hey, these are Christmas movies and they might incorporate something in there that you don't expect, like maybe Santa Claus. And they've done that a couple of times. And I'll admit that kind of switches things up because you wouldn't think, you know, a company like Hallmark would even go that distance by saying, hey, we're going to take this love story that's basically the same love story we've done before but we're going to tweak it a little bit by basically making the male love interest the in, the reincarnation of Santa. You know, and he's out, out and about looking for the new Mrs. Claus. Okay, fine. Okay, fine. That's, that's cool. Don't get me wrong. That's cool. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, even though you make that slight difference, if you take that, you know, change out, it's basically, like I said, the same movie people have already seen. You know, so as I mentioned earlier, I will give them credit that, you know, they will, they do know how to, they can switch it up, but it's something that they need to do more of because, you know, like I said, the viewership and ratings obviously are up during the Christmas season for them because these are Christmas movies, you know, but even though that might be the case, we don't know what the viewership is during the non-Christmas season. It could be up, it could be down. I'm looking more along the lines of down because, yeah, why would you need to start making the money up, if you will, in the middle of the year by basically having your employees go out and about and put out the Christmas stuff already, not just in your store, but in all the associated partner stores across the country? You only do that if you want to get ahead of, one, the Christmas season, but two, you want to basically financially try to get ahead because maybe you lost some money or you're losing some money because you're basically, you know, repeating the same stuff you've done before. And I think that's what's, and I think that's one of the reasons they do it, along with some other stuff. But be that as it may, be that as it may, you know, Hallmark has to really, you know, sit down eventually and think about, okay, you know, obviously our Christmas thing is very popular but how do we freshen it up because you know and because obviously they can't you know depend on the fact that the ratings are always going to be up i mean i guarantee you there are some times that the ratings might be down especially for the new films because of the fact that basically as i mentioned earlier people could see through the fact that this is the same film they just saw it just might be tweaked a little bit to be different it might be tweaked a little bit by having certain actors and actresses playing different roles and stuff. And it might be tweaked differently because it's in another location or it has a different title, period. But it's basically what they saw before. And, you know, like I said, eventually they got to sit down and think about, okay, you know, this is a popular 
thing for us. We do get good numbers during this time of year, but what can we do to make it better? What can we do to really skyrocket those numbers to the point that, hey, people might want to consider checking out the Hallmark Channel and our spinoff channels on a daily basis? What can we do? And to me, they have a library of content at their disposal. They do. Let's not deny that. There is one, there is one Christmas special they do have, mini-movie, if you will, that has not been seen in a long time, and Huey, of Huey's Animated Movie Reviews, likes this movie, I like this movie, it's a very cute movie, and that's Annabelle's Wish. If they could broadcast that on their main channel, I guarantee you people will watch. Not just you know, the targeted audience, and they know who they are, and I say that with all due respect, no offense, but kids will watch because, A, it's a cartoon, and it's a Christmas one. And one of the main features about it is Santa can talk to the animals and vice versa for this one time of year. The, you know, so to me, if they did stuff like that, you know, by looking through, okay, what do we have Christmas-related from the past that we have not showcased in a while that we still have the rights to, something like putting Annabelle's Wish on would be one way to go. There's there's no look no other way looking around it. But it's not just that as well. It's also about experimenting. You know, going back to animation, you know, if they have the money to do so, hold on for a second, I get some coffee. Get, trying to wake myself up while before I get ready for work. Uh, but if they have the money to do so, as I was saying, then obviously what they could do and should do, in my opinion, is hire an animation studio. Whether it's a CGI animation studio, a decent one at best, because obviously they have money, or one that's a traditional 2D, but does the 2D, like, let's say through Toon Boom, you know, sources like Toon Boom, like what they did with the My Little Pony movie, you know, if they can outsource them to do an animated film, maybe based on one of those stories, instead of doing it, you know, live action wise, that's something different, because even though it might be just an animated version of something we've already seen, but under a different title, and, you know, the synopsis is tweaked, still, it would be enough of a change to where even kids who like cartoons, who doesn't, would want to tune in and see it themselves. Because, you know, it's a Christmas, it's an animated Christmas movie on Hallmark. And Hallmark, you know, they're not guilty of this either. You know, Lifetime, I think I've mentioned this earlier, Lifetime and Great American Family, they do the same stuff. But, if there's one thing we can give those cable channels, those outlets, is at least they do try to change things up a little bit more. I mean... Great American Family is obviously more targeted and more focused, I should say, on trying to make things more uh, Christian faith-based, if you know what I mean. They're trying to make it more Christian faith-based. And, and if you don't get what I'm saying there, ask Candace Cameron Bure, you know, Kirk Cameron's sister. Ask her. You see, she used to be basically the queen one of the reigning queens of Hallmark's Christmas. Excuse me. But then, Hallmark started to go down a different path. You see, Candace was, like I said, the queen of Christmas. She was, basically the me she was basically the megastar and everything because just about almost, just about almost, keyword to almost, uh, every movie they had, she would star in. You know, she would be the main female protagonist. But, ever since Hallmark decided to get a little experimental with kind of changing things up a little bit, you know, and I'm not talking to the upteenth extreme degree, no. I'm talking, okay, let's, you know, get woke. Let's get this way. Let's do this. Let's do that. Let's show our pride, if you will. Candace decided, eh, eh, this ain't happening. I'm out. And what did she do? She went over and 
became part of a new channel called Great American Family, where she is essentially the CEO. She, I, she's not a founder, because obviously this channel was founded before her, but she went over and became pretty much, you know, as a CEO, you know, like a co-founder, like somebody that came in later on and helped really take the channel to where it needs to be. She and others that basically have the same belief went over there because they didn't like what Hallmark was doing. And look, if you're part of the LGBTQ and woke community, hey, this change might be what you've been wanting Hallmark to do for a while. And Hallmark finally said, okay, fine, we'll do it. You know, stop pressuring us, you know. Um, but yeah, but yeah, that, you know, but yeah, basically, you know, channels like Great American Family and Lifetime, as I was mentioning before I went off on that, before I went off on that little uh, discussion there, you know, they too need to switch things up and they do. They do switch things up more so than Hallmark. Although they are still guilty of basically doing the same movie, you know, over and over again, just tweaking the synopsis, changing the title, switching the roles for the actors and actresses to be in, and even the filming locations. You know, they, they too are guilty. They, Lifetime, and even some of the broadcast networks are guilty of doing it. Now, I know you might say, now I know you might sit there and say, well, you know, isn't that something that we always see sometimes in the rom-coms or even, you know, the romedies, you know, the romantic dramas, you know, all that, the romantic comedies or whatever? You know, isn't that what we see all the time? Yes and no. Yes and no. We do see that. I'm not denying it. But what's different about those, especially during this time of year, is at least they switch things up. They make things more interesting. You know, they don't make it so predictable. I mean, yeah, by the second or third act, you kind of get the idea of, okay, this is the path that's leading down towards, but we know pretty much by the third act, things should be okay, right? But what makes it enjoyable to get even to those predictable points is they make things a little bit more funnier. They make things more intriguing, you know, for you to... To kind of sit down and watch and wonder how you're going to get to that predictable point, you know, point B, if you will, point, you know, basically that predictable third act. You know, it makes you still be, it makes you curious, is what I'm trying to say. It makes you curious. And I do apologize if I'm stumbling on my words. It's early. I got to get ready for work in about 26, 24 minutes or 25 minutes exactly. But anyway, like I was saying, Basically, they do switch it up to where even someone like me will watch and be intrigued as to, okay, how are we going to get from point A to point C, you know, and back again? How are we going to do that? Because they, they, the thing, the thing is, they will add in stuff that's different. Like four Christmases? Yeah, we know where that's going, especially by the end of the second half into the third act. We know where that's going. We know the predictability there. But what makes it fun, though, is what they do to get to that point. That's what gets your interest. That's what gets your attention. And it shows that even a movie that has a predictable, you know, second, you know, ending of a second half into a third act, you know, even though it has that, you know, attached to it, it's different enough to where, you know, you could sit back and enjoy it and even tolerate that. You, you basically don't predict the outcome of how they're going to get to that point, is what I'm saying. You know, so, you know, it's to so it's basically, you know, different enough to where even someone like me can watch it. I mean, even Disney's I'll Be Home for Christmas. Yeah, that movie. That movie with the voice of young Simba himself, Jonathan Taylor Thomas. Guess what? You know, that may have not been a good Christmas movie in the eyes of some, but still, it was different enough to where you were able to enjoy it. I mean, they went and they went and did some things there that, yes, obviously you knew what the predictable third act was going to be. We all saw that. But what was interesting, again, just like Four Christmases, you know, that I've mentioned before, is they did enough in that movie to really get, you know, keep you guessing of, okay, how are we going to get to that third act? How are we going to get to this, you know, final part of the second act leading into the third act? How are we going to get there? You know, it kept you thinking. It kept you wondering, you know, and that's a good thing. That is a good thing, in my opinion. And, you know, to me, 
That's what Hallmark needs to do. Hallmark needs to take, you know, the, to, you know, they need to take time. I'll put it that way. They need to take time to sit back and go like, okay, how can we switch things up, make them different enough to where basically, basically, you know, people will watch, they will tune in and watch. What can we do to make things more differently? And I think what they need to do, what they need to do is they need to basically, um, you know, take a page out of the playbooks of those people that wrote things like For Christmas Is wrote things like National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, wrote things like I'll Be Home for Christmas, and stuff like that. You know, they need to take a you know, page out of those playbooks. They do. You know, Perfect Holiday, you know, they need to take a page out of. You get the idea. You, you, you know, you, if you look at what, if they take their time to look at what those, you know, stu movies did, those studios did with their movies, that, yes, again, they have predictable, you know, uh, uh, they had predictable later halves of the second half into the third act, you know, moments. That's not, that's a given. But they, like I said, they had things though in there that made you wonder, okay, how are we going to get from point A to point B? If you know what I mean. How are we going to get from point A to point B and then eventually point C? How are we going to get there? You know, at least they had enough in there to keep, you, you know, even someone like me's interest, you know, you know, a valuable if you catch my drift. But again, it's just something that Hallmark needs to really learn from. I guarantee you this. I guarantee you this. That if it's not Hallmark that, you know, gets it right eventually, finally, finally decides, okay, outside of going and showing our support for LGBTQ and getting woke and everything, you know, if it's not, you know, this change around the Christmas season that they make, I guarantee you channels like Great American Family, channels like Lifetime, broadcast networks like CBS, ABC, and NBC will be a step ahead of them. They will be the ones that realize, hey, we need to change and switch things up so that way we're not repeating ourselves. I mean, AMC, I'll give them credit, is already ahead of the game on that, if you think about it. They are. AMC actually, you know, believe it or not, AMC actually is mixing things up this weekend. Yes, they're going to show, you know, maybe once or twice the National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, and that's fine. It's a very popular Christmas classic. But in between, you know, what they're calling the Mary's 80s Marathon, they're going to show other 80s movies that are not Christmas related. Movies like National Lampoon's Animal House, uh, Bueller's Day Off, um, Ghostbusters, you name it. They're going to show those films alongside National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. And why are they doing it? Because they don't want to be stagnant. They want to switch things up. And this is one way of doing it. Because you nobody would have probably saw that coming. You know, so, if I'm Hallmark, yeah, if you're... Hallmark Christmas movies and Countdown to Christmas thing is still working and still a success, you know, continue to run with it, but do not be afraid. And the same goes for Lifetime and Great American Family and even the broadcast Big, Four, Big, uh, Big Three or Big Four, you know, that being CBS, NBC, ABC, and Fox, but mostly the Big Three out of Four, which is CBS, NBC, and, you know, and ABC, you know, again, the same goes for them. If I want to keep people intrigued, you know, intrigued with what I'm bringing to the table at Christmas, and I want to get them to tune into these movies, you know, then change things up, switch them up. You know, look at the theatrical movies like Four Christmases. Look at Christmas with the Cranks. You know, look at all those movies and realize, hey, the reason those are successful is because they switched things up, they made things interesting before they got to that predictable second and third half. So, so to me, they need to switch things up. And like I said, the same goes for Lifetime, Good American Family, and the three out of four, big four, if you will, that being NBC, CBS, and ABC. 
They need to switch things up so that way when they showcase these kind of movies and specials, they're not so predictable. In fact, if you want the truth, ABC's kind of already ahead on that curve. Because you think they would show some Christmas stuff too, and they do. But they're also using this time of year to showcase specials you wouldn't normally see. I mean, one of the things they're doing a week from ten today or a week from tonight is they're doing a 30th anniversary special on Beauty and the Beast. You know, so that's something to look forward to, and I am. Because, I, you know, who doesn't like Beauty and the Beast and doesn't probably want to see, okay, how do these guys do it? You know, who doesn't want to see that? I'm just saying. The point, the point that I'm getting at in closing as I get ready to get myself in the shower for work. Um, what the point I'm getting at is Hallmark, more, more so than anybody, more so than Lifetime, more so than Great American Family, more so than any network site out there that are doing these Christmas, you know, rom-coms or romedies, you know, rom you know, romantic dramedies, you know, or, yeah, romantic dramas, if you will, you know, or romances, period. You know, more so than any of them, because they too have to follow suit in this, Hallmark needs to really switch things up, and they need to switch it up as soon as possible. Because, as I've said before in videos, it's going to take more than just switching a title, and as I've said here, more than tweaking up a synopsis and switching the roles of, of you know the same actors and actresses you've had in the previous movie into different roles that are diff different than what they had before. It's going to take more than that. It's going to take more. I mean, they have a library stuff, you know, Christmas content, if you will, probably stored away that they haven't really touched upon. You know, content like, let's say, the animated classic Annabelle's Wish. That's something that Huey Toonmore himself of Huey's animated movie reviews has touched upon. And check that out. I think it's here on YouTube or on Vimo. It's one of the places. But he loves that one. I do too. So, to me... Hallmark needs to go into the library and dig that classic up. They do. Dig that classic up. And I guarantee you, you broadcast, you advertise that you're going to broadcast that for the first time in a while. And not only will you get people's attention, but you'll have even the kids, you know, of this generation. You'll have kids of that generation when the movie came out, which was like the early 2000s. You'll have them... Wanting to tune in and watch it. Maybe even DVR it. If you catch my drift. Uh, I just stepped on something there. I don't know. It's a rock. It's a little pebble rock in the in the house. I don't know how it got in here. Uh, maybe Probably my mom brought it in by accident. But anyway. Anyway, like I was saying. You do that. And it will get people's attention. There's probably other classic Hallmark stuff that they have of Christmas content from the past who knows how many years that's under their name that they still have the rights to that they could bring out of storage and they could showcase on their network. That's switching things up because this is stuff that has not been seen in years. And yeah, you might say, well, what if it's stuff from the 80s? What if it's stuff from the 90s? Who cares? Who cares? You know, if it's you know Christmas related and it hasn't been seen in a while, it's going to be new to a lot of folks. Yeah, it's going to be new to a lot of folks. So if I'm Hallmark, I look into doing that. You know, the same with, like I said, networks like Lifetime, Great American Family, Up, uh, if you will, Up and Family as it's called, Ion, AON, and then like I said, the three out of the big four, CBS, NBC, and ABC. If I know I have classic Christmas content you know, at my disposal, that has not been seen in years, if not decades, I dust it off and I bring it out and showcase it to the public, whether it's good or it's bad. In fact, in fact, I have a Christmas movie, even though it didn't feel like it till at least the end, that was showcased on NBC. And you can find it here on YouTube. You can. And it was the anamorphic version, animated version in 1994 of Charles Dickens' David Copperfield. Yeah. 
They tried, and yes, they did fail. I'm not going to deny that. They tried, and yes, they did fail to make that into an animated staple to be seen for years to come. But it never got off the ground. And now it is out there for people to watch on YouTube. I guarantee it. And if you want to know who they got for that voice-wise, try Julian Lennon. Try Sheena Easton. I'm just saying, names like that. And to me, I thought it was good. Yeah, the song could have been better. I'm not going to deny that. Song could have been better. But it was good enough, in my opinion. It was good enough, in my opinion. And to me, whoever has the rights to that, I mean, obviously, you can find it for free on YouTube. It's obviously fallen in the public domain. Whoever wants to get the rights to that, do it. Do it and show it on your network, and I guarantee you people will tune in. You know, it's little changes like that. It's little changes like that that will, you know, make a difference in your network, especially, especially during this time of year. So it doesn't feel like to anybody else that you're just repeating the same story over and over again, even though you're trying to promote it as something new and original. So to me, Hallmark, more than anybody I've mentioned here, needs to really switch things up. They need to. And they need to do it as soon as possible after this season. Because the ratings might be up now, but just like the non-Christmas schedule, the ratings eventually are going to go down. And I hope and pray they realize that. Because you know what? Even my mom, who's an advocate Hallmark watcher, and friends that I knew in high school graduated with are Hallmark watchers, they're slowly migrating over to channels like Up and Family, slowly migrating to channels like Great American Family, slowly migrating, you know, over to Lifetime, to Ion, to to the big, the three out of the big four at this time of year because they have more variety and not just the same thing over and over and over again. So I hope Hallmark takes heed of this. They take this into consideration. And they realize it's time to wake up. And hold on for a second, I get some coffee. Hopefully, they realize it's time to wake up and stop making the same movie over and over and over again. Because I can guarantee you this, and I say this with all due respect I guarantee you this, not even the actors and the actresses. Probably enjoy the fact of, oh, we got another Christmas job, another Christmas movie to do. Let's see what it is. Oh, it's just the same movie we did before. We're just playing different roles. It's a different title, and the synopsis has been tweaked. Oh, well, it's a paycheck. We'll do, we'll just do what we've done before. And that's it. That's it. You know, they'll give effort. I'll give them that. I'll give the actors and actresses, you know, an A for effort, you know, in at least bringing their acting skills to the table. But still, you can't tell me that they kind of get a little downtrodden to the fact that they know they're going to film the same movie they just did, you know, probably months ago, you know, for, you know, you know, as a, you know, as a Christmas film. You can't tell me they're not bummed out of the fact or like thinking, you know, why are we doing this again? Oh, well, you know, they probably want variety, too. And they probably want variety, too. So hopefully over time, over time. They get that variety. They get that opportunity. Because hope and pray, A, that Hallmark wakes up and realizes that. And once they realize it, hopefully the networks, if they don't, the other networks and cable companies uh, realize it if they don't beat them to it. Like I said, they're already kind of doing that too. They're already doing that kind of too. And, you know, you can't really, can't really blame them on that. I'll be honest with you, you can't really blame them. But we'll have to sit back and see what happens. We'll have to sit back and see what happens. But Hallmark, if I'm you, more so than anybody, I need to start considering changing things up. If I got a library of content, you know, at my disposal that has not been seen in 30, 40 years, you know, I dust it off and I use it to give variety. Don't to me, don't, don't even 
you know, consider what the naysayers say, all right? If you have, you know, a variety of stuff, you know, if you have a variety of stuff of content at your disposal, then to me, you need to utilize that content. You, you need to utilize it, you know, to the best of its ability. You know, you need to do that. And you need to do that quickly. Because like I said, if you think the viewership numbers are up right now, that's fine. That's great. You know, don't get me wrong. You know, that's fine. That's great. But I guarantee you, over time, throughout the years, those viewership numbers will dissipate. And you do not want that. Believe me, you do not. So, Hallmark, Great American, Hallmark more than anybody here, Great American Family, Lifetime, you know, Up and Family, everybody that does Christmas-related content, rom-coms, you know, romedies, if you will. If I'm you, ladies and gentlemen, if I'm you, then I do myself a favor and I start switching things up for the better. Because the quicker you do that, the more interest and intrigue will be given to your product. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. But anyway, though, guys, I got to get myself ready for work here. Let me know what your thoughts are down below and in the live chat during the premiere. Like the video and the podcast. Also support me at BW Roses Discussions at all your favorite audio podcast locations, except for Pandora, where we have 10 new episodes, 10 new podcasts that are up. This one will be the newest one as well, eventually. But, you know, support me there. Support me over at Vimo at BW Roses for con to see content you can't see here on YouTube due to reasons. Also, check me out at Patreon.com, says BW Roses, for the $1 or $3 tier. Also, ladies and gentlemen, check me out at my Teespring store. Support me there, especially for gifts during this season. I guarantee you'll find something there for your family. Also, check me out at Venmo. Support me at Venmo at Brian Roman 2 and Cash App at BW Roses 98. Also, ladies and gentlemen, support me and check me out at divanart.com says BVW 1979. But until next time, guys, I gotta get myself ready for work here. And I will talk to you all next time. God bless. Take care. <laughs>